you know, I had a staff at one point of about 18, 19, and all they cared about was, am I getting my check on Friday? Uh, wow. So, you know, I really didn't like it, and I was ready to leave the practice of law. In fact, I had job offers in New York and St. Louis, uh, managing lawyers as opposed to practicing. And a friend of mine said, there's going to be a couple of openings, you'd be a great judge. Mm -hmm. I said, mm, I don't like judges. Yeah. <laughs> and he asked me why. I said, because I don't come from South Florida. I'm a foreigner to most of the small. In 75, this Fort Lauderdale was a very small, tight community. Yes. You either went to the University of Miami, you went to Florida, or you went to Florida State. That was it. And I got frustrated when I would go into a courtroom and the judge would like be talking about a football game from Saturday and mm. they'd look at me and say, what do you want? I'm here on a denied. So definitely you would not have liked a judge because here the judges would have denied you in many, many cases. You would have had your war with the judges and now you're going to become a judge. Well, my friend said, and it was very true, and I carried it all the way through my career, take all the things you don't like about judges, don't ever do them. And I had a philosophy that first I had an open door. I had a philosophy that I said, if I said or did something that uh, somebody thought was inappropriate. Uh, they had every right to take me outside the courtroom, turn me around, kick me in the rear. And I will tell you, I had some lawyers that did it, and they were right, and I would go right back into court, and I would apologize. Uh, my ego really didn't get in the way of doing a job. My job was to be an umpire. Mm -hmm. Fair, impartial, consistent. And from the day I started, to the day I left, that was always my reputation. I was tough, but fair. To that a point wonderful. where all the lawyers wanted to try their cases with me. That is interesting, that is interesting. And I think that would have given you a phenomenal experience in dealing with lawyers, with all different kind of cases. And I mean, it, it really puts you into some mindset of stability when you're a judge. It puts you into some serious decision making, huh? I loved my job from day one to the last day when I had to retire. I was passionate about my job. Everyone knew, you know, my courtroom ran as a team. If you think I was the boss in my courtroom, I never was. But I ran a very good, well-managed uh, courtroom. I had great staff. Uh, I had very little turnover over 35 years. So all your entire 35 years were right here in Broward County? Correct. I started in Hollywood as a county judge and got elevated by Governor Lawton, Lyles, Gordon, Lawton <laughs> Childs uh, to the circuit bench. And I spent almost 30, uh, 28 years as a circuit judge trying um, the worst criminal cases, uh, career criminals, capital homicides cop killers. <laughs> interesting, interesting, very interesting. So now this position of clerk of courts, mm -hmm. what motivated you? What motivated you to run for this position now after 35 years as a judge, serving as a judge? And um, what do you hope to achieve when you become clerk of courts? I, and it, what is the, this position? The clerk of courts is probably one of the least uh, known positions and it's probably one that touches every single person in this community. Interesting. You, you get a traffic ticket, you have to deal with the clerk of courts. Uh, their job, in addition to passports, marriage licenses, uh, is to collect fees, to collect costs, which make up the budget, which gets sent to Tallahassee. Tallahassee then decides with the clerk's uh, organization and corporation for the 67 counties, uh, how the money is going to get divvied up. Uh, I will tell you that the only thing I agree with the present clerk on is that the office is underfunded. And it is. Oh. But that's a legislative matter. That's not. So, so, how many clerk of courts do they have? Well, there's the clerk of court. 
Okay, Just and that's like the position you're running for. That's the p position. The clerk of course. Right. There are anywhere between seven and 800 employees, mm -hmm. depending upon how many openings there are. Okay. Right now, I think they're bordering around uh, a little over 700. You know, money's tight. Money is going to get worse now as a result of COVID. Yes. But COVID has taught us how to work very differently. Yes. Doing things that we never, ever thought we would or we could. And one of my goals is to not only lift the morale of the office, it's to modernize the office to a point where we can become virtual. We do Zoom hearings today. You know, the judges are doing all their motions, all of their stuff with the exception of trials over Zoom. Mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. why should John Q. Citizen have to leave work, uh, drive to the courthouse, find parking, pay for parking, to go in only to be told, well, we can't help you today, come back another time. Yes. As opposed to getting on a Zoom at a particular time and dealing with individuals who can help them with their yeah, problem. Yeah, because we are in a world of technology nowadays, so we've got to use technology to the maximum right. we can. And we have to experiment, and we have to yes. start moving yes. forward uh, to points that we never thought we would. Now, I've been asked, uh, where do you think you're going to find the money, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to be able to modernize and computerize the way you're talking? I said there are foundations, there are grants through corporations, and I firmly believe that that money is available uh, at this stage. Mm -hmm. uh, they're still the ones making money. <laughs> interesting, interesting. But why I decided to do yeah, this? Yeah, what motivated let me, let me you go back to where you started? To get into this position when instead of relaxing after serving for thirty-five years. Well, I as did a retire, judge. and I will tell you point blank: I don't need this job. I have a very comfortable pension. I don't have that as a financial problem, but for since our new clerk came in in 2016, she would have started in 17, uh, the morale in the office went from bad to horrible. It's a leadership style. It's a matter of, is the clerk open to new ideas? To me, the ideas and the progress crum come from those who participate. You know, I admit, do I know every aspect of that office? No. Same way the president, you know, well, I don't want to talk about that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but let's take that as a, uh, just as a uh, position. When a president of the United States comes into office, uh, they don't know what the full job is about. You hope that the individual is one that can inspire, one that can lead, and one that is willing to take advice uh, from a cabinet or other people. From the experts out there. Right. To me, the, from the highest level to the lowest level, you know, in terms of what the clerks do, they're the ones that know what has to change. They're the ones that know uh, the ideas to move forward. And they need to know that they have a uh, team leader, which is the way I look at myself, that will listen and hear what they have to say and work with them so everybody believes that we're all on the same team, yes. uh, which we are. Uh, an office should be uh, one that is open, one that everyone is pleased to work with, and that the employees can take pride.